Hey, New City Church, this is Gafar, PG-13. I'm coming here today to bring you a devotional based out of Joel chapter 2. Uh, the tagline of it is, tear your heart, not your clothes. Imagine being plagued by so many things that have come to eat away all that you've grown or have built. In the book of Joel, we read about this plague of locusts that has come to eat and destroy all the good things that are around. The things that have been uh, there for a while, stuff that God has helped to instill or has brought about. In chapter 2 of Joel, these locusts are talked about as an army. They swarm around the city, climbing like thieves through the windows and leave desolation behind. It says in verse 6, fear grips all the people. And maybe you can relate to that. You know, we might have uh, an army of locusts that swarm around you right now and they're bringing destruction and they might seem to keep entering in through all these places. These locusts can be financial lack, familial separation, the loss of a dream, despair, feeling hopeless. There's so many other things. COVID still being around, lockdown still going on, political tension, racial tension. There's so many things of locusts that are swarming around all of us. What we can be found doing at times is living in seclusion, us individually, or trying to stop these locusts by ourselves. In our own man-made ways, we try to change things by our hands and take on the weight of fighting this army by ourselves. You know, sometimes you may feel like you just have to handle it all. All these things happen day after day, something else, more bad news. I've done that. I continue at times to still do that, and I'm still working through it, so I understand. But look at what it says in verse 13 of Joel chapter 2. It says, don't tear your clothing in grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. To me, our clothing represents our belief. Oh, strange, yeah. <laughs> our belief is what drives the unction for us to take matters into our own hands. If we believe that God led an army to combat our fears, then we wouldn't even be worried about the unbelief. But because we don't believe, we wear these clothes of unbelief. When things happen in our lives, situations come up or more of these locusts swarm us, we may tear the unbelief. But what we end up doing is we put on the same clothes of unbelief back on because our hearts aren't torn. The heart is where our belief is. The heart is where it stays. Heart is where everything is out of. Remember what Pastor Gilbert said this past Sunday from Psalm 51? If you were paying attention, it's one of my favorite verses. It's such a great life verse for me as well. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Oh, God, you will not despise. What God wants is brokenness and a relenting, repentant heart. So when it says, tear your heart, look inside and ask, where is my belief placed? Is it in these clothes that I've put on where I live in unbelief of who God is, but I live in belief that these situations are bigger than he is? Or is it in the reassurance and knowing in my heart that he is my God and my father and that he will take care of me and that he will provide and protect me? You and I are children of God. He is our heavenly father who cares for each of us. When we go back to Joel, look at the verses before verse 13 at the uh, verse 11, it says the Lord is at the head of the column. He leads them with a shout that this is his mighty army and they follow his orders. The day of the Lord is an awesome, terrible thing. Who could possibly survive? Remind your heart that he is the head of a mighty army and that nothing will be able to stand against the king of kings and the Lord of lords. See, with everything that we're facing, that we're going through, God is the one who can combat all that. If we choose to believe within our heart, if we choose to place him as the king of our heart, as we choose to say, Jesus, I put off the things of this world. I put off these garments of unbelief and I'm tired of ripping these things off that I'm just going to put back on. But let my heart be broken. Let my heart be torn, God, in a way that allows you to remain on the throne of me. That remains, that allows you to remain as the king who I submit to, who I believe and the one who is in charge of a mighty army. So as we continue on with our fasting and prayer, let us be led to repent from the times of unbelief. Um, when we've put unbelief as the garments that on that we clothe ourselves, because, you know, unbelief isn't what we're supposed to be clothed with. No, it's the full armor of God that we are supposed to be clothed with on a daily, as well as the garments of praise. Jesus, forgive us for those times that we've put on other garments, other things, God. And when we have gone towards other stuff or try to take things in our hands, Father God, 
Remind us, Lord, that you are here with us and that you are the one who can handle everything, God. Lord, I pray uh, for all of us, Lord, that we would just continue to place you as the rightful king of our heart, that we would submit to you, and that, God, we would have a brokenness in our heart, a repentant heart, God. Lord, one that says, I've been trying to handle stuff. I've been doing things myself. Let me go back and allow the Lord to be here. So, Father, be on our hearts, be on our minds. We welcome you, we relent to you, and we, we repent before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Thank you, New City Church, for taking a listen to this. Continue on fasting and praying. God is doing amazing things in New City Church. Be encouraged, even in your own personal lives. He's going to do something great for all of us this year.